Hello again, it's Izzy here. One of the biggest things that's changed in the new version of Final Cut Pro, version 10.1, is that there's a new structure, there's a new organization to how projects and events are organized. Let's take a look. So one of the biggest things you'll notice right off the bat is that there's a new icon here. It is this little icon right here with the four little squares and the stars in, inside. That is an icon for a new kind of container called a library. A library is something that contains other events and projects, and we'll take a look at what that means here in a second. But before that, where are the projects? We gotta answer that question. It used to be that projects had their own place, a project library, no longer. The projects now are stored inside the event. So for example, if I select this event right here, you can see I have my raw clips, my raw footage that can make up an event or make up a project. So these are four clips that I have here that are just video clips. They haven't been edited or anything. They're my raw footage, my source footage. But up here, I have this section called projects. Projects are at the top of every event. If you have a project, you'll find it at the top. It has a different icon. And the project is the edited version of your video clip. So it's nice because now your raw footage and your edited projects are all kept together in one place. It makes it very easy to stay organized. If you wanna make a new project, you just go up to file and choose new and create a new project. Notice you can create a new event or a library from here as well. I'm gonna choose project for now. I'll give it a new name. I'll just call it test03. And you can see you have to select an event for the project to go inside. Projects are kept inside events now, right? So I have to select an event. I'm gonna use the same one. I'll click OK. And it opens up here in the timeline too. It's a blank project. If I scroll down here, I can. you can see here it is, Test03, it's blank. I'm going to just quickly add a couple clips here just as a demonstration. Okay, so now I've added a couple clips to my project that I just created, Test03. So that's a big change. Projects are no longer in their own place. They're now part of an event. But an even bigger change, in my opinion, is this concept of a library. A library is a container. And I like to think of them almost like projects or documents or something because you can open and close them. So for example, if I look at this Izzy Video Library right now, it's in my interface, but I'm not really using, I'm not working on an Izzy Video project. I'm editing family projects right now. So maybe I don't need Izzy Video open. I can select that library and I can go up to File and choose to close it. I can close that library, so now, once I close it, if I twirl this down, you can see that it's no longer here. The Izzy Video Library is gone. But later on, I might decide that I wanna use it again, so I can go up to File, choose to open a library, and there's a shortcut here, it's in my recent menu, but I could also choose other and find it anywhere on my hard drive. That's a nice thing, you can actually keep libraries anywhere on your hard drive that you want now. That's also something that's new. I'm gonna choose the Izzy Video Library here, and I'll just close it. I will twirl it down. I'm not gonna close it, I'm gonna collapse it. I should emphasize there's a difference between those. When I click on this disclosure triangle, I'm collapsing it. I'm not actually closing the project or closing the library. If I wanna close it, then I would select it and go up to file and choose close. Or you can also control click and then you'll see you have the option to close a library from there as well. Okay, let's create a new library to demonstrate this. I'm gonna to go to file, choose new, and I'll create a new library. I can pick a location anywhere on my system. I have this testing new Final Cut Pro 10 libraries folder and I'll call it test library 04. And I like to use underscores instead of spaces. That's just a style thing. You don't have to do that. I'm gonna click save. And now I have this test library 04 here and it has an event. You always have to have at least one event. If I were to try to delete this right now, notice that I can't move this to the trash. That event is the last one in that library. You always have to have at least one event in the library. So if I choose to move the event to the trash, it's gonna tell me I can't. The operation cannot be completed. The library must contain at least one event. Also, if I try to take this event and move it to another library, if I go to file, I can't move the event to another library because if I were to move that event, then there wouldn't be any left and you always have to have at least one event. So can you move things from one library to another one? Well, let's take a look. I have this event two here. There's no clips inside of it right now, but if I just wanna move this event, I can click and drag, and let's say I'm gonna drop it in this test library 04. Notice I haven't let go yet. I'm hovering over it, and you see there's a plus sign there. That plus sign lets me know it's gonna copy the event. If I want to just move it, then I need to also at the same time, once I have started dragging that icon, I need to hold down the command key on the keyboard. And you can see that the plus sign disappears. Now if I let go, it's actually gonna move it. It's gonna say move items to the library. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna read you word for word what's happening, but basically what it's saying is it's gonna move or copy depending on what you're doing. And the include section says if there's optimized media or proxy media, you can choose to take it with you or not. I don't have any for this clip right now or for this event. Obviously it's empty right now. So I'm just gonna click okay. 
you can see that the event 2 has moved to the test library 02. So that's one thing you can do. You can move events from one library to another one. You can do the same thing with projects and clips. It works very similar to the same way. By the way, you don't have to do the click and drag method. You can also select something that you want to move and go up to file and choose to move the event to another library. I'll move it back to the library demo 01 library. It's going to give me the same window. I'm going to click OK. And there it is. It's back here again. So you can create new libraries. You can copy things from one library to another one. But what I think is the coolest thing of all is that you can actually take your library as one big bundle and move it to another hard drive. So if you have another hard drive that you, maybe an external drive, and you want to just take everything you've been working on and put it on that external drive and take it with you and go plug it into another computer and work on it there, you can. It's very easy. Let me show you how this is done. So let's say this test library 04. What I'm going to do is I'm going to control click on it. And I'm going to choose to reveal that library in the finder. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to find it very quickly. That's a fast way to find it in the finder. And let's take a look at what this is. You can see it looks like one file here, this test library 04. And it is a final cut library. You can see that here for the type. If I control click on this though, you can see I have an option here called show package contents. Well, what's inside there? What's inside the package? Well, you'll find other things. A folder here for my event, some database files. As a general rule of thumb, I don't make any changes to what's going on inside that package there. So I'm going to click back. I just wanted to show you it was in there. But the nice thing is everything's packaged into one. It's all bundled up together. So it's very easy now. Let me go here and close this down. So I'm going to close my test library before I do this. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to go back to my finder, command tab over to my finder. I'm going to choose this test library. And I'm going to take it and put it on my desktop. Right now it's on another hard drive. But let's say I want to move it to my desktop here. and. I can just click and drag and bring it over here. Now the plus sign, once again, that means it's going to copy. So if I want to change it to a move, I have to hold down the command key on the keyboard. All right, now I let go. And now you can see it moved that whole library to my desktop. And of course, in that library are events, projects, the underlying media clips. It's all stored there together. So now things are more portable than they've ever been in Final Cut Pro 10. This is something I totally love. And if I want to open this up in Final Cut Pro 10, it's closed right now, as you know, but if I want to open it, I can just double click on it and it'll open it up here. I'm going to twirl this down and you can see there's test library 04. And there's one more thing I want to show you really fast. And this is something that you might run into. So I just want you to be aware of it. Let's create a project here. I'm going to just do another new project and we'll just call this test. Okay. So now I have this project here and it's opened up in my timeline. Now, I don't have any clips inside this event. So in this project, or excuse me, in this library right now, the event contains no clips, it just has a project. But what if I want to use a clip from another project inside this project? So maybe I have a clip over here and it's in a totally different library. I have this clip right here. I'm going to click, I'm going to drag, bring it down here into my project. Now keep in mind, I'm using a clip from one library in a project in a different library. What's going to happen? Can you do this? Well, the answer is yes, you can. But what it's going to do, it says you're editing clips between libraries. Final Cut Pro will copy the file. So it's going to make a copy of it, files and the clips to the library, test library 04. Media stored in external folders will be linked to but not copied. That's the external folders, external files, things outside the scope of this video. I'll cover that in another one. But just keep in mind it's making a copy of the media. So it is taking up more space on the hard drive. It's making a copy of that underlying media. And why? It's because each one of the libraries should be its own standalone container. If I am using a clip in this project here, I want the associated media to be inside this library. Maybe not inside the same event. You could have another event with the projects, but you want all of the media, all of the clips, all bundled up together inside one library. So that library then becomes very portable. It's easy to move from one drive to another one. It's easy to move from one computer to another one. It's easy to archive. You could just put it on another hard drive and archive it, put it up on the shelf if you want. So now the big question is, how do you know when to make a new library? Well, that depends on your workflow. You can see here that I've created different libraries for different types of video clips. Like I have a family video library. That's where I put the footage for videos I'm making that are just, you know, family videos. And I have another one here for Izzy Video. I have another library that's for paper clipping. That's not attached right now. You can see I don't have it open, which is really nice because I'm not working on paper clipping. So why should I have it open here? I love this. So you could have different libraries for different projects different libraries for different shows. And then inside the library, how do you know when to make a new event? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, for example, I might make a new event in the Izzy Video Library for each episode of Izzy Video. But if I was doing a short film or a feature film, I might have an event for all the clips we shot on day one, 
another event for all the clips we shot on day two, or maybe I have one event for locations or a certain location, and another event for a different location. Or you might have an event that has all the footage that you shot for scene one, for example, and then another event for scene two. You get the idea. You can customize it any way you want. Clearly, libraries give you the ability to do some amazing things that you couldn't do in previous versions of Final Cut Pro 10. It's a new thing, so it does take some getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's just awesome. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.